All right, welcome to our second Lunch with DARBA webinar. You are joining in for the Rain Barrels and Reducing Your Water Footprint webinar. Like I said, this is our second one. If you missed last week, um, protecting our waterways and what you can do now to help, you can view the recording on our YouTube channel or on our website. We are posting the recordings and then any upcoming um, webinars that we have on our webinars page on our website. You can look find that under our programs tab and environmental education and then you'll find webinars. So just a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, video is off for all of our participants. Um, my video is the only one that's on and it just makes sense to do it that way. It keeps the distraction down. And then your Zoom icons, if you haven't tuned in to using uh, Zoom before or a Zoom webinar, you guys have icons up at the top that have um, the chat box and those kinds of things. Those icons will you know, disappear. You can just go back up there to the top and it should pop right back down, so no problem. If you guys want to talk to me throughout the webinar, you can send a chat message. And then at the end of the webinar, we will give specific time for questions and answers. All right, so I think that's everything that I need to tell you to begin with. Uh, you can also raise your hand. There's a little button for that if you want to talk and we'll get started. Thank you all for joining us. And by the way, I'm Krista Hodges. I'm the education manager. And if any of you want to contact me after this webinar, uh, you can send it to my email address, which is khodges at danriver.org. All right, so let's see here. So if you guys are not aware of uh, our organization, we're the Dan River Basin Association, and our mission is to preserve and promote the natural and cultural resources of the Dan River Basin through recreation, education, and stewardship. So usually I'm the education manager and I go out to a lot of schools and do presentations and programs like Trout in the Classroom or Stringside Trees in the Classrooms. And I would be at this time of the year visiting a lot of schools right now doing trout releases. We reach thousands of kids each school year. And then, um, you know, obviously we're not doing that right now because the schools are closed. So we've started this webinar series and I'm very excited to get this started. It's something that we've wanted to do for a while now, but um, now we finally have a push to do it and it's very timely. So I'm hoping that we're able to reach more um, people through doing this kind of thing because after um, you know after the webinar is over I'm recording it and we're putting it on our YouTube channel so we can promote it from there as well. We also do a lot of recreation projects such as um, building trails or river accesses. Um, we have our first Saturday outing that gets people outdoors uh, doing uh, hiking or canoeing or kayaking and of course that's when things are you know a little bit more on a normal side of things and then we also have stewardship projects that may include like water quality monitoring, um, litter cleanups, and those kinds of things. All right, so this is our map. We cover 16 counties between Virginia and North Carolina, and um, our organization is obviously a bi-state organization, and we are a nonprofit, and we are member-based. Um, so a lot of our funding comes from grants um, and donations and that kind of thing. So that's what our um, 3,300 square miles, so all the way from you know the, up, the headwaters in Patrick County all the way down to Car Reservoir or Bugs Island. So another thing I would like to say is Happy Earth Day. Today is the 50th anniversary for Earth Day, so it's very exciting. I'm glad that we were able to do this webinar today because um, we're going to be talking about like water conservation and what your water footprint is and how you can reduce that. So it just seems like the perfect combination for Earth Day. So one of the things that I want you guys to remember, it seems like when you talk about like Earth Day and protecting the earth and doing um, environmental um, projects and stuff like that, you have to think about it on a large scale. And that's not the case. I want you guys to remember that little things add up to make a big impact. If we're all recycling, that'll add up. If we're all, you know, we're talking about rain barrels today. If we're all, if we all have a rain barrel, that's gonna save a lot of water. So I just want you to think about that and remind you guys, like how will you take action today? Like maybe this will be the start of something that you do differently today. Um, so happy Earth Day and 
I'm looking forward to it. I, I know um, some of the people from last week, we were talking about stewardship projects and they were talking about just going out and doing like a, sim a simple litter cleanup. So it's very small, but makes a lot of impact. So what is a rain barrel? In case you haven't heard of it before, a rain barrel is a water tank, which is used to collect and store rainwater runoff. We will also call that storm water runoff. So it's basically the same thing, just when you get rain or a storm, you get the water runoff and it typically, you're able to collect that from your rooftops or your rain gutters. So rain barrels are devices for collecting and maintaining harvested rain. So that picture there is a picture of my rain barrel. Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter and I painted that rain barrel. So we'll talk more about some different rain barrel options here in a little bit. So why are rain barrels important? The average American family directly consumes almost um, 100,000 gallons of water each year. And then if you include the water, if you don't produce your own food and energy and your goods and stuff that you buy, if you include those other things and how much water it takes to produce those, that jumps to almost 2 million gallons annually for just the average, average American family. So that's a lot of water. So like I said, little things add up to make a big impact. A single 55 gallon rain barrel can save up to 1,300 gallons of water every year. So if, every, if all of us did that, it saves a lot of water. So this picture over here, this image, um, our water footprint, we will talk more about that in a little while, but just take a glance at that. I mean, you can see how much, you know, what we think is pretty small, like a bowl of pasta. You know, 53 gallons of water is a lot just to make a bowl of pasta. So we'll talk about more of that kind of stuff here in a little while and how you can figure out what your water footprint is. All right, so I'm gonna check out the participant list one more time. It looks like everybody that registered for this webinar is here. So thank you all again for coming. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or anything like that, you're free to do that in the chat box. So I'm just checking that really quick and we're good to keep going. All right. So our water supply is limited. We must remember that it seems like we have, you know, all the water that we need, but we need to be very careful with it and conserve it because the water that we have now is the same water that was here at the beginning of time. It just goes through a water cycle. So we need to conserve it and protect it and make sure, you know, as little pollution as possible gets into that water because it's just going through a cycle. And just remember, um, you know, it covers most of our planet, but only a small percentage of it is actually fresh water. So reduce, how do we reduce storm water runoff or rainwater runoff? I was telling you guys what I called it earlier is rainwater runoff. So runoff is rain and melted snow that was not able to soak into the ground. This occurs because services like parking lots, roads, and roofs do not allow the water to soak into the soil. Instead, it just runs off, goes into those drains, it usually runs, and most of those drains, most people don't know this, but a lot of those drains go straight to our rivers and streams. So anything that's being picked up, any of that pollution that's on the ground in these parking lots or anything like that are going directly to the streams. So what's the causes of storm water runoff? Pavement, concrete, and other um, waterproof or impervious surfaces make floods more severe. And as our cities grow, these problems get worse. So if they don't allow the water to soak in, you get more flooding. And that makes, you know, this problem. So you guys have all seen within the last couple of years, some major flooding issues with our storms. And, you know, down in North Carolina and other areas, it seems like the flooding has become more and more. So I just want you to keep that in your mind. So why is storm water runoff an issue? Well, I told you most of those drains go to the nearest river or stream. So sediment loads that travel into our rivers and streams directly impact the aquatic species that are in there and their habitats. It makes it um, you know, unsafe for them, unhealthy for them, but also most of our drinking water comes from the rivers or streams. So we collect it from the rivers and streams, clean it up, and then that's where it goes to our tap water. So it's affecting water quality and even quantity for us. 
So that's something we need to really be mindful of. So why should we care? Like, what should we care about with reducing our water footprint? First of all, if you're wondering where like a lot of our um, water use goes to, if you're in a single family household, outdoor irrigation accounts for half of single family water use. You think, wow, that's a lot. I mean, how can 50% of that um, usage go to outdoor irrigation? Well, we'll talk a little bit more about um, that problem later on but it's gonna be related to our yards. So most of you think probably single family might go to a garden, but that's not the case. And we'll talk about that shortly. So what does this all mean for you? Well, if we have rain barrels and we're using them to water our gardens or our trees or our lawns or anything like that that we might have um, around our house, it's free rain water. And this will save you money on your water bills, which is positive for all of us, um, especially in this time, you know, if we've had any job loss or anything like that related to, you know, the pandemic, now is the time to think about, you know, sa saving your money, you know, saving on water bills and those kinds of things. And also it helps reduce demand for energy intensive treated tap water. Remember I was telling you we were taking it from the rivers and streams, but a lot of that needs to be, you know, cleaned up very heavily so it can limit the stormwater runoff and erosion and it saves water for use during times of drought, okay? So DARBA and rain barrels, how have we worked in the past with rain barrels? So usually we have um, a partnership with River Network, which is an international organization that works with organizations like DARBA that works to do um, conservation and protection of our resources. And then Project Rain Barrel is a project through River Network. So they um, started this project to help our organizations host rain barrel workshops. So we've been doing rain barrel workshops for about three years now, and we typically hold them in the spring. So because of this partnership with River Network, we're able to keep the cost way, way down for our DARBA members, and even for non-DARBA members. So I'm saying here, our cost is typically around $40 for DARBA members to do our workshop. And even for non-DARBA members, we try to keep the cost around $50. So it's very, very um, inexpensive compared to if you guys are interested, like right now, you want to buy a rain barrel online, like I'll show you some options here in a few minutes. If you decide you want to buy a rain barrel, your cost is probably gonna be around $100. I will show you some options shortly. But this spring, um, we decided not to hold our workshops and we're hoping to sign up for this um, project again on the, in August and be able to hold some more rainbow workshops either you know, over this coming winter or in spring of next year. So just keep your eye out or you can email me if that's something that you're interested in and I can put you on a list and keep you informed about those upcoming opportunities. Okay, so Obviously, I said right now, we're not doing our rain barrel workshops. So how, if you want to create your own rain barrel now, I'm gonna tell you some options about how you can do that. So first of all, you can purchase a rain barrel set up online. So, and I'll show you some options, but you just need to decide what type of rain barrel you want. And so that'll make sense in just a few minutes. But if you wanna save, you know, as much money as possible and you have your own barrel that looks sort of like that. Um, you can upcycle your own barrel into a rain barrel. And I will show you some options of the things that you can buy to do that. Um, I would encourage doing like a food grade um, barrel or, you know, I've even heard of people using um, the big trash cans as rain barrels. And that's an option too. Just think about what you're putting it in and the type of plastic that it's gonna be in. And then maybe even what you're going to be using it for. If you're just using it to water your lawn, then it, you know, food grade probably wouldn't matter. But if you're putting it on your garden or something that you're gonna be consuming, definitely consider looking into a food grade barrel. And then you'll need your parts kit, diverter, and your stand, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some options of where you can purchase a barrel from and your supplies. Now, I'm not in any way promoting like these particular 
websites that I'm going to show you. I'm just showing you some options. And um, these are pretty easy ones to find. You can probably even go to your local, I think some local stores, like maybe like Ace Hardware, if they're still open right now, um, they have rain barrel options as well. And like I said, they're probably around $100. But I'm going to show you these links here in just a minute of some different options that you can look into. But for our rain barrel workshop, see this picture here of the blue barrel. Um, that's typically what our barrels look like. They're just usually white. And then we can paint them. I would recommend putting some kind of primer on it if you get a white barrel, at the bare minimum, some kind of primer just to keep the the UV and the lighting from going through and encouraging a lot of algae growth, okay? So your first option is um, this one. This is like your most basic option. It's a 55 gallon rain barrel. And this one is from um, Wayfair. I showed you the link to that one just a minute ago. So if you're wondering about the links that I'm showing in this webinar, um, after it's recorded, I'm gonna save it and put it, like I said, on YouTube you can visit our video on YouTube and click on the links, or you can just take your own notes. But if you go to wayfair.com, you can easily find like a bunch of options on there. I'm just showing you a few different ones and they're having a sale right now. So that's a good option. Um, this one is the, a very basic one. It's a little bit different from ours in the fact that the top um, screws off. With our rain barrels, they are sealed tight. You can't take the top off of them. So this is a pretty neat option. Um, only thing is with this one, you're gonna have to put a screen on top of it, a very like fine mesh screen, because it appears that this one, you're gonna be cutting your gutter off to be able to use this one. With ours, we use a diverter. So you just put a hole in the gutter and then it goes straight into the rain barrel. This one is just gonna dump straight into the, the water from your um, gutter. It's gonna dump straight into the top of the rain barrel. So this is a very good price, about $90 for this one. And I think on Wayfair, anything over like $45 or $50 is free shipping. All right, this one is a little bit different. It's a little bit more expensive, but you can see that it has a little bit of a different look. It's more of a polished look. Um, looks like a barrel, like an actual wooden barrel. And I'm pretty sure you could probably paint that if that, that was something you wanted to do to make it look like a real barrel. Um, but I really like this one too. This option is nice. Um, you can cut off, you know, your gutter again to do this type of rain barrel. Uh, the ones that we use, like I said, we just cut the gutter into the gutter and then use a diverter. But I will show you that option as well. All right, how is, this is just a check-in. How is everyone doing? Do you have any questions so far? Okay, looks pretty good. We'll keep going. All right, here's another option. I really like this one because you can put the flowers um, or any plants that you have on top of it. And it kind of, kind of gives it a little bit more of a decorative look. Um, you can see that this one is a little bit more expensive and it's on sale right now. I think this one was from the rainbarreldepot.com. Um, so this one, I really like it that the flowers just give it an extra something special. But that's kind of dependent, you know, if you want to pay that price or if you just want to you know, get one of the more simple ones and maybe paint it. But like I said, if you're gonna paint it, just use a primer and then some um, acrylic paints are fine. We've done that for our rain barrel workshops. And then another thing to look at with this one is that you have your valve here and then you have another valve at the bottom. The ones that we use, um, we just have the one valve for the spigot. So um, I'll show you in a few minutes, I have a link to an option if you already have a rain barrel and you're looking to add a valve kit to it, uh, they have a very inexpensive option to get that kit and you can just put it in the bottom. Now, one of the pros are, um, for doing something like that, you can see that this spigot is a little bit high and if you have it sitting right on the ground or on your deck or patio or anything that you have it sitting right on instead of sitting on a stand and you're wanting to get your bucket up under the spigot, then you're going to have to have your spigot up kind of high. And then you, as far as, that's as low as you'll be able to drain it with the spigot. And that's why having, um, you know, this valve down here at the bottom to hook your hose pipe up to is definitely a pro because then you can drain your barrel the rest of the way. Now, if you do that with one of our barrels, 
you know, in our kit that we usually provide, it doesn't have both options in there. It's just the spigot in there. So something to think about. All right. So if you are interested in upcycling your own barrel, let's say you already have a barrel or you have a trash can that you want to use, there are some things that you need to purchase to be able to do that. Now, in particular, the, the um, parts kit that we use is from the rainbarreldepot.com. So through our partnership that I was talking about a little while ago through um, River Network, they um, send us these kits from the rainbarreldepot.com. And that, this picture down here in the bottom is of the kit. So if you're gonna go on the rainbarreldepot.com and you wanna find the kit that we use, um, it's about $35 and I think that's free shipping. So you can find this kit and it has all of the pieces in there that you need uh, to make your rain barrel using a, you know, like a 55 gallon barrel. The only thing you would either need to make or purchase separately is the stand. So you can either make like a wooden stand or you can buy like a resin stand. And I think the ones on wayfair.com, those resin stands are supposed to be guaranteed and not breakable. So that's a pretty good option. Or if you just want to use some, you know, maybe some wood scraps that you have laying around to make a stand. Personally, I would recommend um, getting your rain barrel up off the ground because if you get it up and you've got to go, like if you want to hook your hose up to it and you have a long ways to go, the more height you have off the ground, the more chance that you'll have that gravity feed to pull the water out of your barrel. So, um, you know, that's something to think about. If you have a long ways to go with your water to get to your garden, then I would recommend raising it at least a foot off the ground but the higher you have it, the more pressure you're gonna get for pushing it where you need it to go. Just keep in mind when you're using your barrel, like where, if you set it up and where you wanna put it, just make sure it's as close as possible to whatever you're gonna be using it for, whether, whether that's water in your garden or on your lawn, or, um, you know, we had somebody that came to one of our workshops last year and he just wanted to use it for his ghost peppers. He just had ghost peppers to water you know, a very small amount, but he wanted to do that and, you know, he kept it close by. So put it close by and make sure you put it on level ground that may require you actually digging into the ground a little bit uh, to make it level. And if you want to keep the cost down, you can even use cinder blocks as well for your stand. Um, that's what we use for ours. If you go back to the beginning of this presentation, you'll see that we just have ours on cinder blocks. But if you are in like a, a neighborhood that has, you know, certain requirements for that neighborhood, then you may want to think about how it looks a little bit differently. But for us, our some, uh, um, you know, the cinder blocks and it looks, you know, fairly decent. So just think about what you want, where you want it to be, and maybe what you want the look to be. So some additional items for your rain barrel. Uh, you might want to think about if, you're, if you already have one and you want to hook up another rain barrel, you know, maybe this is getting you to think about water conservation even more, and you want to use a linking kit to hook up between the two. Uh, Wayfair has a really good price on one. It's only $22 right now, so I would think that would be great. You can just link it up. Just remember, you know, your first barrel needs to be raised up higher than your second barrel. So, um, you know, your other one might be sitting directly on the ground if you have your first barrel a foot off the ground. Does that make sense for everyone? Hopefully, if you have any questions, like I said, you can put that in the chat box. And like I said, there will be um, question and answers at the end of this webinar. All right, so a rain barrel pad, if you are putting yours directly on, you know, on the ground, this rain barrel pad right here, you know, for $48, it's supposed to be uh, unbreakable. It's just like a flat rock kind of deal. You can get it in different colors, so it's a really neat option. Or if you have something in particular that you wanna set on that, that's a really good price point for that. And then I was talking about the valve kit. Uh, if you have, if you look down in this picture, this is what our rain barrels look like. You see the valve, the spigot right there. And then this person added a valve at the very bottom. You know, if you, if you only are able to drain your rain barrel to this point, then you need something on the very bottom to drain it the rest of the way so that water just doesn't sit in there and get a lot of algae growth or something like that. Or if you're trying to drain it out, uh, maybe for winter, you know, next winter, 
so your barrel doesn't freeze. That's an option as well. Now I did see some options on Wayfair.com that said that their barrels were made out of um, a particular um, plastic that expands very easily and you don't have to worry about them cracking over the winter. So that's a really good option. You wouldn't have to take it down over the winter. You could just leave it up and continue to use it. You know, we had spinach um, that grew over the winter through December and January. So, I mean, we could have watered that or if you have any like plants that you put out or anything, you know, maybe in the cooler months, um, that's an option as well. So I think having a, a one that stretches with the colder weather is a good idea. All right, so reducing your water footprint. What does that mean and why should you be concerned about it? Like what all does that entail? So I'm just, this is just a few like quick um, notes here for things that you can do. Probably all of these you've heard of, you know, only shower for 10 to 15 minutes, only run your dishwasher when it's full, those kinds of things might be something that you've heard of to try to conserve water, maybe drink less coffee or try tea. Supposedly it takes a whole lot more water to, you know, get the coffee from start to finish. And then, you know, drinking tea could be a little bit better option if you're really thinking about conserving water. It doesn't take as much water from start to finish to make tea. And then maybe eat more vegetables. So you can see over here in this little graphic, so average daily water footprint of our diet, a vegan, it takes a whole lot less water. So even, I'm not saying like everyone needs to become vegan or vegetarian to save water, but maybe just cutting out, you know, one meal a day, not having meat. So that could save a lot of water. Like for us, you know, sometimes we do like meatless Monday. I'm sure that everyone has probably heard of that. So just eat more vegetables and less processed food, maybe think whole foods. Um, less processed food. If you look at that, you know, you can think in your mind from start to finish, it's going to take a lot of water to do that. So, all right. So reducing your water footprint. So how do you guys figure out what your water footprint is and how can you reduce it? So if you are interested in taking a quiz to find out exactly what your um, footprint is, they have a calculator at watercalculator.org. So, and it asks you some questions like how many people are in your household, maybe it's just you, maybe it's you and your spouse or, you know, significant other. You can put up, you know, to however many people it is. Maybe you have several children in your home. You just go through several questions and answer them. How long is the average shower in your household? Uh, some people, you know, they really like a 20, 30 minute shower. You know, be honest in these questions to figure out what your amount actually is. So I went through, this quiz only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. So I went through it and this is, this is my calculation, my water footprint here. You can see that my personal use um, was over a thousand ga uh, gallons a day. And that, that includes things like driving your car, um, those kinds of things, running your dishwasher, maybe uh, doing washing your clothes, uh, your, the food that you consume. Um, it, it encompasses a lot of different options. Now you can see that I have a low water footprint. Um, feel free to brag about it. I'm not bragging about it. What I am going to tell you is what I do that helps me uh, have a lower footprint. So we have a rain barrel. We recycle uh, paper, plastics, glass, and metal. We don't care about washing our cars. You know, they get washed when it rains. The only time we might spray it off is if there's a lot of salt on the ground or on the roads over winter. And then we only run our dishwasher when it's full and we don't let our faucets run when we're, you know, brushing our teeth or we're, um, you know, maybe running the sink water. We just don't let them run like when we're washing dishes. Uh, so we always turn them off. And then if you need to get hot water, yeah, you have to run it a little bit to get the hot water, but we just don't let it run the whole time we're trying to brush our teeth or maybe in the shower when you're you know, soaping up, you can turn it off then as well. So that's just a few different things to help, that helps me reduce my water footprint. One of the things that hinders it a little bit is the amount that I drive. You know, I drive a lot. I drive at least uh, 30 minutes to my office every single day when I go to the office. Of course, right now, we're probably not driving that much, but when I do drive, that's one of the things that hurts me just a little bit more than some of the others. Okay. 
All right, so if you are looking for um, maybe some easier fixes to start this process, this water conservation process, or to maybe get your water footprint down just a little bit, there are some options for you. Obviously, we've talked about rain barrels and what that can conserve, but there's some other options that are available as well that are very small. Remember I said that things add up to make a big impact. So one option is a shower timer. It's super easy to install. You can probably get it at most of your local stores, something like Lowe's or Ace Hardware, and they're pretty inexpensive to purchase. Um, you can get them to say, again, it saves money on your utility bills because it's encouraging you to take a, a shorter shower. Like I said, you can find it on Lowe's or you could probably even go on Amazon right now and find one um, for a pretty inexpensive price. All right, so another thing that we need to think about, like lawns or lawns, if you have a big yard, it covers 40 million acres in the US. So our uh, lawns are one of our biggest crops. So that's in quotation marks. So it ranks as our, our largest irrigated crop. And even though it's not a crop, it almost seems that way because you would, you would think, oh gosh, why would we water something that we're not consuming, right? It's crazy to think that, but Americans spend tens of billions on lawn care every single year. And most of us, you know, I don't, we don't do that at our house, but a lot of people like in the cities or, you know, somewhere that maybe that's in a neighborhood that has certain expectations, they feel like they need to do that to have a nice, pretty lawn. And if you think about it, I mean, you're out there grooming that lawn all the time just to make it look a certain way. So one thing that I want to encourage you to do instead of having your lawn, get rid of your grass and try to plant something maybe that's edible and build up our food supply. And then also you can plant native wildflowers or prairies in your grassy area. And that'll even cut down a little bit if you're not a big fan of mowing grass or having to do that like every week and sometimes twice a week, then that gives you an option to just, you know, get rid of some of that lawn and not have to worry about mowing it. It'll be a little bit more of an up, upkeep as far as like having a garden, but you'll be able to consume some of those um, plants. So turn your lawn into a garden. So you can see here, these are some options. I think these are really, really neat. You can see that a lot of people are using like raised garden beds and then they have like gravel. You could do this, you know, if you don't wanna do it in your front yard, you could still do it in your back backyard and that would cut out some of that lawn you would have to mow. You can see in this bottom picture here, you know, this is a very large garden. You're not saying that you have to do it that big, but something like this, I mean, these are just small little pocket gardens and they can produce a lot of food. I think they look pretty neat too, but like I said, if you're in a neighborhood that has a certain expectation, maybe you could do this in your backyard. All right, so one of the options um, or one of the features that came with Zoom is a poll. So I'm gonna get you guys to vote in your poll. I'm gonna pull it up right now and we're gonna launch it. It's just, I hope everybody can answer this question. So what is your interest in rain barrels and reducing your water footprint? So maybe you would like to purchase a, a rain barrel online to use this summer. Maybe you wanted to find out when DARVA is having another rain barrel workshop so you can be a part of that and keep your costs a little bit lower. And then you may already have a rain barrel and you wanted to learn more about reducing your water footprint. All right, we got almost everyone voted. All right, five. Okay, so I'm gonna end the polling and I'm gonna show you guys what the results are. So most of you said you would like to purchase a rain barrel to use this year or you wanted to find out when DARBA is having another workshop so you can participate. So like I said, if you are interested in participating in our workshops, at this point, the way things are going, we're probably not gonna have rain bear workshops until either uh, the winter or next spring because the program, uh, rain barrel project program through River Network doesn't open up till August. And then we gotta get the kits in and the rain barrels. So one of the things that I didn't say, if you're looking to get a rain barrel from us, because of this partnership, we actually are able to get rain barrels from Coca-Cola. 
and those are the ones, you know, they have the, um, the hydrochloric acid in them that they put in Coca-Cola that makes you have that burn when you drink it. Um, that's where our rain barrels come from, but we've been asked before about if they are available to the public. Unfortunately, we can't just go to Coca-Cola and ask for a rain barrel. That's something that organizations have to do. So you guys, if you wanna wait till then, you know, when we're ready to do more workshops, you can do that. But hopefully, if you're ready to get started this year, you can look into some of those options that I showed you. And then we've got one person that says they already have a barrel, they just wanted to reduce, find more ways to reduce their water footprints. So I'm gonna stop that now. Thank you everybody for voting. And we'll keep going just a little bit further. So I want to tell you about our Lunch with Darwin webinars. We have one coming up next week, our virtual tub of bugs. I hope you guys can make it to that one. If you think that somebody else might be interested in this workshop, I'm going to advertise it for um, students and teachers definitely to be a part of it. Maybe you have some uh, children at home that would like to see something cool. We're going to be showing some live aquatic insects on the next webinar. And then we're going to go through like why uh, these aquatic insects are important to organizations like us and maybe of importance to you guys as well. And then some future webinars that are coming up will be about snakes and uh, possibly a recreation projects update. And then I'm also hoping to have teacher webinars as well, maybe about um, MeWe's or about how to start your own green schoolyard. So I'm waiting to schedule those. And as soon as we get those scheduled, we will be sharing more information about that. Just remember, if you want to participate in a webinar, you must register to participate. And you can do that, you know, for each individual workshop you have, I mean, sorry, webinar, you have to register. So each one, make sure you sign up for it. So thank you guys for doing the poll. Now I have another question for you guys. Do you have any webinars that you would like to see from DARVA in the future? If so, please comment in the chat box. All right. And now I am opening this time up to questions. Maybe you guys have some questions about rain barrels or about installing them or something like that. Um, now is the time to do that. Okay, so we had one question come in. It says how to install live stakes in cre uh, creeks or streams. So Randy, would you mind um, clarifying that question just a little bit more? Future topic, okay. I'm not sure what you're talking about from a, a live stake. So maybe if you can um, give a little bit more information about that. Okay, any other questions? or recommendations for future webinars. All right, so we will stop there. Um, if you guys have never heard of DARVA before, I would like to say, you know, maybe you guys wanna become, become like a DARVA member so you can get discounts on workshops or you can learn more about what our organization does. And one way that you can do that is um, by signing up for our e-newsletter. If you guys have not been to our website, standriver.org, you can um, learn more about that there. So live tree stakes. Um, I guess, Randy, you're probably maybe asking about like how to do that along the creeks and streams, maybe a riparian buffer. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit more, but in the meantime, uh, you can email me directly about that and we will talk about some options. Uh, we also have our riparian buffer project that's on our website. You can go there and find more information. There's a riparian buffer guide there. And there's even a native plant guide on our website. So check that out. And if you have any more like detailed questions you want to ask Randy, you can send that to my email address and we'll talk about that there. All right, thank you all for coming to this webinar. Like I said, the next week is the virtual tub of bugs. So I hope to see you all there. Thank you for coming. I'm gonna stop the video now.